This is just for all the people out in the internet world. Driving oh, down the road. Oh, you can put us on YouTube? I see these two guys out here with these signs. I just wanted to see what you guys had to say. <laughs> what do we have what are you guys doing out here? We're standing here for freedom. Right? Right? We're standing here for, for a constitutional government. And we also want to see reduced taxes. And uh, more dependence on the individual, less government. That's why we're here. And we're not party oriented. That's right. Absolutely. So we're not Republicans, okay. we're Americans. Absolutely. This is Absolutely. not about Republican, Democrat, right wing, left wing. It's about what's right. Absolutely. Right. Quit, quit fighting with each other. That's Focus right. on what's really going on. So we're here every, uh, every week. Uh, this is our 17th week and we're going to be here until the whole thing turns around. We're across the country. You want to join our club? What's your club called? I started a club called the Patriots. Corner Club. The Patriots Corner Club. You guys got a website? Yep. Yep. What is it? PatriotsCornerClub.ning.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll make sure I send you guys this. Okay, good. We got a couple of clubs going on, too. What do you guys think about uh, old Obama sending more troops out? I think it's about time, but too little too late. Okay. It's, as All my right. father said, who fought in World War II, you fight to win. It does not appear that he's fighting to win. We haven't fought to win since World War II, if you think about it. Korean War was never settled, Vietnam, we left. So we've got this habit now of not committing ourselves to victory. Did you notice he never said victory in his speech once? Absolutely. And that's Absolutely. part of the problem. I'll tell you what else I noticed. There you go. I, I noticed about a year ago, around this time, he was talking about pulling troops. Yes, he was coming into office. That was one of the first things he was going to do. Now that was in Iraq though. Iraq. Iraq was the bad war, Afghanistan was the good war. But now Afghanistan's not such a good war. You see, the important thing is, I think that every American has to come out and do something like this. <clears throat> because you see some people drive by all the time and they beep and they wave. And I appreciate all that. Some guy bought us coffee. And that's really great. But I wonder what people are doing when they're just driving by and go home. What do they do? You know? I mean, um, I work all day, all night, and I'm here, so why aren't other people here? Part of the problem is, and he and I talk about this all the time, Mr. Obama is not doing anything any different in general than anybody has done in the past hundred years. It's been a slow process. The difference is, his process is not so slow. He's kind of slapped us up the side of the head. Because George Bush did the same kind of stuff very slowly, taking away our freedoms started actually in, uh, in 1898 with the Supreme Court decision. So we've been slowly moving towards, if you want to say socialism, collectivism, whatever you want to call it. But big government has been on the rise for a long, long time. It's just now Mr. Obama, in less than a year, is really stuffing it down our throat. And it's kind of made people, some people anyway, a little more aware of what's going on. Tell these people to wake up. Young people, old people, have been young people talk to me and say, what can I do? Same thing we're doing. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's easy. But get active or you're going to get the result that you don't really want to see. Pretty soon, if your waist is too big, they're not going to give you some sort of benefit or they're going to fine you. Whatever it is, they can take health care, take away your guns on the basis of health care. They can do all kinds of things on the basis of what you're doing impacts other people. Therefore, we have to penalize you in some way. You can go to jail if you don't have the right insurance and you persist in not having the right insurance, you can be fined and go to jail. Most people don't realize that's in both the House and the Senate bill. So what are you guys doing? Oh, trying to do the same thing you guys are doing. I figure, I see two of you guys out here. We need to make sure everybody sees this. Uh, this, sh hope. this should be going on on every single corner. There should be a so. mass of people here. Oh, yeah. Sure. Part of it is, it's not easy just to go do this. It's a little, little bit nervous. I mean, I'm, I'm a guy my entire life. I never protested. And I'm in my 50s. And uh, this year's the first time I started. So if I can do it, you know, old dogs can learn new tricks. <laughs> Absolutely. So hopefully you can help get some people out here. Have these guys been giving you any hard time? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, uh, they've been, they've been, uh, I talked to them today, they said no problem. Uh, you know, we're not interrupting anybody's flow of traffic or crossing okay. streets. So the police across the country have been accepting of people doing this. And the uh, <laughs> two motorcycle cops, Capitol Police, 
and two cars converged on me. They said I was, uh, it was okay what I was doing, was legal, but they wanted to know why I was there. But DC is the only place, and I've been doing this since February 27th in one form or another, it's the only time the police have ever bothered me. It was in Washington, D.C., outside the Capitol. I gotta say, it's awesome what you guys are doing out here. Bel Air needs to wake up. Well, the whole country needs to wake up. We actually, we went down for the uh, the march on D.C. on 9-12. Yeah, I was there. After that got hijacked by Fox and uh, uh, Glenn Beck and all of those good. Well, I don't have a problem with the publicity, call it hijack, whatever, but we're not getting any coverage. If you remember, they first were saying there were 30,000 of us. And the joke was, for those of us who were going to the bathroom, standing in line for the toilets, was that 30,000 people lined up to go to the bathroom. I did a calculation. I didn't even know people were on the mall. I looked at just a Pennsylvania Avenue. I, knew, I found out what the width of the street was. I used the same uh, speed that Obama's people used in their calculation, I came out with 1.52 million people just on Pennsylvania Avenue over the three hours. That doesn't include the hours later. They shut the roads down. Yes. You couldn't get in there. Yes. By, by what, noon? But they say we had 70,000 people there. Yeah, hundreds of thousands. Uh, were you there on 11-5? No. There were probably 25,000 of us there. I don't know, there were some trucks there, but I don't know how much coverage, if any, we got. Uh, by the way, people were upset because the Capitol Police had automatic weapons. I talked to the Capitol Police this week, and they say that is the standard now. So for people who are upset, that is normal. It wasn't just because we were there. What about the uh, sound cannons they had up at G20? Yeah. Well. Most people don't know about what happened in Tennessee in 1999, what I call the Tennessee Tax Revolt. The Republican governor called a special session of the legislature to pass an income tax. Tennessee didn't have an income tax. The people found out this was before the internet was too big, but talk radio, no organization, people flocked down, they occupied the speaker's office, they surrounded the Capitol and intimidated the legislature and they didn't pass it. Tennessee still does not have a state income tax. But nobody's heard about it because the media never covered it. If you look it up in Google, there's very little about it. There's only two websites that I could find that even talked anything about it. Because I don't think the elite, the politicians, want us to know that it does work. And I have suggested that we do that in Congress. But we've only gone